So, um, this one. Yeah, okay, got it. <clears throat> Recent studies have suggested that uh, uh, alarming rates of anti-Semitic activity on college and university campuses uh, are, we're, we're finding them across the country, across the U.S. A survey of U.S. Jewish college students at Trinity College, uh, by Trinity College and Louis D. Brandeis Center for Human Rights Under Law revealed that 54% of the surveyed students reported experiencing or witnessing instances of anti-Semitism on campus during the first six months of the 2013-2014 academic year. Another survey. <laughs> Another survey of campus anti-Semitism conducted by Brandeis University in the spring of 2015 found that three quarters of North American Jewish college student respondents had been exposed to anti-Semitic uh, um, rhetoric, and one-third of students reported having been harassed because they were Jewish. Both surveys found that anti-Israel expression, particularly expression related to BDS campaigns, was a major factor in students' reported experiences of anti-Jewish hostility. So in order to understand more fully the nature and scope of campus anti-Semitism on US campuses, as well as the factors influencing it, the organization that I direct, AMHA Initiative, investigated anti-Semitic activity in 2015 on more than 100 public and private uh, colleges and universities with the largest Jewish undergraduate populations. Unlike previous studies, which assessed levels of campus anti-Semitism by measuring student attitudes and perceptions, the current study assessed ac anti-Semitic activity by focusing on verifiable incidents compiled from media accounts and eyewitness reports. As far as I know, it's the first study of its kind. So when examining uh, each incident, we look for, this, this uh, we look for one or more of these three different kinds of activity. The first was uh, what we called anti-Semitic expression, which are incidents that are, were identified as having anti-Semitic expression uh, Incidents were, were identified in this way if they contained language or imagery that used one or more of eight tropes included in the U.S. State Department definition of anti-Semitism. This definition identifies both classical and contemporary manifestations of anti-Semitism and includes anti-Zionist expression. The second uh, aspect uh, of, of anti-Semitic activity was targeting of Jewish students for harm. Incidents involving behavior that targeted Jewish students for particular harm based on their Jewishness or perceived association with Israel were identified. Harms consisted of direct threats to the safety and well-being of Jewish students on <coughs> campus or violations of their civil rights and included behaviors such as physical assault, harassment, destruction of property, discrimination, and suppression of speech. And then finally, we looked at BDS activity any activity that contained the promotion or endorsement of BDS was identified as BDS activity, petitions, statements, meetings, events, etc., in which BDS was promoted, supported, discussed, or voted on, were counted as instances of BDS activity. In the interest of time, I won't go into why we understand BDS, the BDS movement and activities promoting it to be anti-Semitic, although, of course, I'd be happy to discuss it in the Q&A or afterwards. So while all three kinds of activity contributed to the overall prevalence of campus anti-Semitism, the targeting of Jewish students for harm took on special significance. This was used as a direct measure of anti-Jewish hostility at a given school, allowing for an analysis of the factors that have had the most deleterious effect on campus climate for Jewish students. In addition, BDS activity was used as a direct measure of anti-Zionist activity. Our, campus all, uh, our study also differed from previous studies in its examination of possible agents of campus anti-Semitism. In particular, we investigated the prevalence of anti-Israel or anti-Zionist student groups and faculty who support an academic boycott of Israel, and we determined their association with each kind of anti-Semitic acti activity. So here are some of our, our findings, not all of them. We actually collected a lot of data and had a lot of findings, but here are the ones I think most relevant to, to us here at this conference. The first finding was that anti-Semitic activity overall 
and each kind of uh, activity individually are prevalent in public and private schools with significant Jewish undergraduate populations. There's uh, evidence uh, of clear, there's clear evidence of anti-Semitic activity at 70% of the college and universities most popular with Jewish students. Language and imagery containing classic and contemporary anti-Semitic tropes were found on 65% and instances of BDS on 54% of campuses. Evidence of Jewish students being targeted for harmful action was found on 41% of campuses. And to round out the data, anti-Zionist student groups were found on 66% of campuses and faculty boycotters on 84% uh, of the schools. It's important to point out that these results, both in terms of the number of incidents of anti-Semitic activity and the number of schools affected by them, are undoubtedly far lower than reality. In particular, we believe that the vast majority of incidents involving the direct targeting of Jewish students for harm go unreported or underreported, making it impossible to find evidence of them when investigating the sources of information that are and were available to us. Nevertheless, the data that we did collect are cause for serious concern. 41% of the schools showed evidence of targeting of Jewish students for harm, which is an alarmingly high figure. No Jewish student should ever be targeted for harm because of his or her perceived religious or ethnic identity. And yet, at far too many schools, Jewish students are harassed and intimidated. Their places of residence defaced with swastikas and other anti-Semitic graffiti. Their participation in campus activities or student government shunned. The events they organized disrupted and shut down and much more. In addition, findings regarding the prevalence of each kind of anti-Semitic activity are consistent with what Jewish students have reported in recent surveys that I referenced at the beginning. The second finding. Anti-Zionist activity, which, we, uh, which is essentially BDS activity, is strongly associated with anti-Jewish hostility or targeting of Jewish students for harm. So 56 percent of, sorry about the, some statistics here, so for those of you who are, don't like them, just sit back and look at the pictures, but, but there's some statistics. 56 percent, 56 percent of schools with evidence of BDS activity had one or more incidents that targeted Jewish students for harm, whereas of the schools with no evidence of BDS activity, less than half, only 23 percent, had incidents targeting Jewish students for harm. Um, and if you, for those of you who are familiar with the statistics here, there's a very, very strong, uh, highly statistically significant results. L only one in 1,000 uh, chance that this is actually a chance ac association or occurrence. And all of the statistics I'm going to present are highly significant to, to at least this degree. Furthermore, schools with more incidents of BDS activity tended to have more incidents that targeted Jewish students for harm. Again, very significant, uh, highly significant statistically. The third finding, there is a very strong association of the presence of anti-Zionist student groups, such as Students for Justice in Palestine, with each kind of anti-Semitic activity, as well as with overall anti-Semitic activity. 57% of the schools with one or more anti-Zionist student group had one or more incidents that targeted Jewish students for harm, whereas only 8% of the schools with no anti-Zionist student group had incidents that targeted Jewish students for harm. 91% of, um, of the schools with, an, with at least one anti-Zionist uh, group, student group showed evidence of anti-Semitic expression. Uh, only 16% of the schools without one of those groups. 80% of the schools with an anti-Zionist group showed evidence of BDS activity, whereas only 3% of the schools without. And finally, overall, 99% of the schools with uh, an anti-Zionist student group had one or more incidents of any kind of anti-Semitic activity, whereas only 16% of the schools with no active uh, group had incidents of anti-Semitic activity. The fourth finding. There's a very strong association of both the presence and number of faculty who publicly endorse an academic boycott of Israel with each kind of anti-Semitic activity as well as with overall anti-Semitic activity. 
46% of schools with faculty boycotters, at least one, showed evidence of targeting Jewish students for harm, whereas only 11% of schools with no faculty boycotters showed evidence of targeting. Um, and f furthermore, schools with more faculty boycotters generally had more incidents involving the targeting of Jewish students, so the correlation was actually quite high about the number of boycotters and the number of incidents. 74% of schools with faculty boycotters showed evidence of anti-Semitic expression, whereas only 17% without. 62% of schools with faculty uh, boycotters showed evidence of BDS activity, whereas only 11% of schools uh, uh, with no faculty boycotters showed evidence. 81% overall of the schools with one or more faculty boycotters had one or more incidents of any kind of anti-Semitic activity, whereas only 17% of schools with no boycotters with no boycotters had any evidence of, of any kind of anti-Semitic activity. Um, and in all cases, the more faculty boy in all of those statistics, the more faculty boycotters, the more of, in general, the more of each kind of anti-Semitic activity. Um, and the overall uh, correlations were just very, very high and, and statistically very significant. The fifth finding, a little more complicated, but it looks for predictors, uh, statistical predictors. So the presence of one or more anti-Zionist student groups and the number of faculty who have publicly endorsed an academic boycott of Israel are, in combination, very, very strong predictors of overall anti-Semitic activity. <coughs> with, again, for those of you who know these statistics, the R squared value of 0 0.49 is pretty unheard of in terms of its, its, its uh, largeness when you're talking about uh, uh, um, uh, studies of, of human behavior. It's, it's really very statistically significant that you can really predict. It's a very strong reliance in being able to predict anti-Semitic activity based on um, based on these fa two factors. In addition, each factor alone is a strong predictor, with the presence of anti-Zionist student groups being a somewhat more reliable predictor of anti-Semitic activity than the number of faculty boycotters. And then finally, the final finding that I want to present is that while the combination of four factors, including the incidence of anti-Semitic activity, BDS activity, the presence of an anti-Zionist group, and the number of faculty boycotters. All four, in combination, were very strong predictors of uh, anti-Jewish hostility, targeting Jewish students for harm. BDS activity is really far and away the, uh, the, the best predictor, the best predictor of uh, anti-Jewish hostility on a campus. So now I would like to, uh, to discuss these things. So first, the factors that contribute to campus anti-Semitism. And I want to start with um, anti-Zionist groups, and I'm bringing the, 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 the slide up about that. So it's not at all surprising that the presence of anti-Zionist student groups would be so highly correlated with overall anti-Semitic activity. Members of these groups, which have a presence on 66% of campuses with the largest Jewish undergraduate populations, are not only in many cases directly responsible for the anti-Semitic expression, BDS activity and the targeting of Jewish students found on their campuses, they often have mission statements that contain anti-Semitic language and prescribe anti-Semitic behavior. For example, the mission statements of most chapters of SJP, an organization found on 85% of those campuses with an active anti-Zionist student group, contain either an explicit commitment to engaging in BDS activity or a commitment to promoting the BDS demands whose fulfillment would result in the dismantling of the Jewish state. Consistent with their anti-Zionist mission, members of SJP and other related student groups host numerous events and rallies, construct displays, engage in guerrilla theater, write op-eds, carry out campaigns designed to promote BDS and other efforts to harm Israel, these activities usually contain language and imagery that meet the U.S. State Department definition of anti-Semitism. In addition, many anti-Zionist student groups have explicitly adopted what's called the anti-normalization policies of the BDS movement, which reject all forms of pro-Israel expression and demand an end to all interaction with any individuals and organizations that do not endorse the BDS movement's anti-Zionist tenets. For example, in one of the founding documents of the SJP group at Binghamton University, 
They outline strategies for, for harassing Jewish students and disrupting or shutting down their Israel-related events in a section of this document entitled, Tactics and Strategies Used to Counter Zionist Normalization. Often, the anti-Zionist normalization tactics include targeting all Jewish students on campus, regardless of their feelings about Israel. For example, at University of California, Berkeley, the announcement for an SJP rally promoting BDS included the demand that the university end its study abroad program in Israel, that it cease its coordinating and strategizing with many Jewish organizations, including the Anti-Defamation League and the Jewish Community Relations Council. In our data, more than half of the incidents that directly targeted Jewish students were carried out by members of SJP and related groups in clear conformity with these anti-normalization policies. Incidents included the disruption of Jewish students, Israel-related events, the harassment, denigration, or physical and verbal assault of Jewish students for their perceived support of Israel, the vandalizing of Israel-related displays, discrimination against Jewish students' participation in school activities because of their presumed pro-Israel stance, and attempts to block student trips and academic exchange programs in Israel. Now I want to talk about faculty. The contribution of anti-Zionist faculty to campus anti-Semitism is less direct than that of anti-Zionist student groups, but it is low, no, no less impactful. First, some anti-Zionist faculty directly support the efforts of anti-Zionist student groups. For instance, 130 faculty members at New York University signed letters endorsing the anti-Israel divestment campaigns of the NYU SJP groups that happens all over the country. Um, Anti-Zionist faculty have also been complicit in actions that have resulted in the targeting of Jewish students for harm. At my university, UC Santa Cruz, for example, faculty boycotters from the Feminist Studies Department joined with members of anti-Zionist student groups in protesting and seeking to shut down, physically shutting down, a Jewish student event. In addition, faculty members who are leaders of the BDS movement and engage in anti-Zionist activism extramurally routinely give their talks at their, their own institutions and others in which they promote BDS and use language that meets the U.S. State Department definition of anti-Semitism. These talks are often sponsored by anti-Zionist student groups, but many are also sponsored or co-sponsored by academic departments or administrative offices. In fact, in 2015, at least 35 events containing BDS promotion and or anti-Semitic expression um, were sponsored by multiple academic departments and administrative offices on 22 campuses. Several of these talks several, several of these talks also featured faculty boycott leaders arguing for stronger academic freedom protections which would provide faculty activists like themselves the unfettered freedom to promote the boycott of Israel and other anti-Zionist advocacy within the academy. Not surprisingly, all of these departmentally sponsored events occurred on campuses with one or more faculty members who had expressed public support for the academic boycott of Israel. In contrast, at schools without any faculty boycotters, there was no evidence of departmentally sponsored or university sponsored talks containing anti-Semitic expressions of BDS promotion. Finally, um, BDS activity. It's not hard to understand why BDS activity stands out as the statistically strongest predictor of, uh, by far of incidents which target Jewish students for harm. As I mentioned, the majority of incidents involving the targeting of Jewish students for harm were consistent with the anti-normalization policies of the BDS movement and included harms uh, uh, such as the suppression of Jewish students' speech and assembly, harassment, denigration, etc. But beyond the clear effect that BDS activities have had on provoking anti-Jewish hostility, they have also had a less direct but no less harmful impact on the campus climate for Jewish students based wholly on a movement whose goal, as articulated by its founders and leaders, is to economically, academically, and culturally isolate the Jewish state in order to eliminate it, BDS initiatives and campaigns are replete with language and imagery that are not simple, simply critical of the state of Israel, but that seek to deny its very right to exist. As such, they are the purest form of anti-Zionist expression found on college campuses today, Expression intended to incite hatred not only of the Jewish state and the Jews who live in it, but the Jews who are presumed to identify with it and support it, namely Jewish students who have not renounced Zionism. So I want to conclude. Um, so as the first uh,
comprehensive investigation of anti-Semitic incidents on college campuses, uh, university campuses. Our study has made several, I think, important contributions to understanding the nature and scope of campus anti-Semitism. First, we introduced a useful and comprehensive taxonomy for quantifying anti-Semitic activity, which utilized the US State Department definition of anti-Semitism, as well as measurements of anti-Jewish hostility based on actions that directly target Jewish students for harm. We provided for the first time a quantitative account of the prevalence of anti-Semitic activity on campuses most popular with Jewish students. These findings are consistent with subjective reports found in recent studies. We provided, we showed beyond the shadow of a statistical doubt that the presence of anti-Zionist student groups and the number of faculty boycotters on a campus are strongly associated with each kind of anti-Semitic activity and are in combination very, very strong predictors of overall anti-Semitic activity. And finally, we also showed beyond the shadow of a statistical doubt that anti-Zionist activity, BDS, activity is strongly associated and is the best predictor of anti-Jewish hostility. The results of this study can provide useful information for decision making, activism, education, policy making, and can be used by university stakeholders such as students and prospective students, parents, alumni, community activists, university leaders, and government officials. We use this, uh, this report very um, effectively about a week before it was published about a week before our big the regents voted at the University of California on this and we actually produced a mini report looking at just UC campuses the five campuses that were in this study showing that their rates of, of campus anti-semitism in, in every single aspect were two to three times higher than national average and I do believe that this was an important factor, at least one of the factors that really helped the regions to be able to make the statement that acknowledge that anti-Semitism is uh, really a serious problem on UC campuses and that anti-Zionism is a particularly pernicious form of anti-Semitism on UC campuses. And finally, to end, I'd like to recommend that there be more studies examining anti-Semitic incidents on, UC camp on US campuses. Studies should be done annually. Um, and with an ever-expanding number of schools, and the data should be mined and then mined again in order to deepen our understanding of campus anti-Semitism and to develop strategies for combating it. Thank you.